Welcome, everyone. Glad you guys could be here live. We'll be starting in just a moment. We're really glad you guys can join us today. We're going to have guests from all throughout Mylio, including our support team, our engineering team, our test team, the designers. So you're going to have all sorts of people that you could talk to. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're really excited. If you didn't get a chance to see it yesterday, we we shipped Mylio Photos, which is also known as our version 22 update. Uh, if any of you are a longtime customer, you might be saying, what happens to versions 4 through 21? Um, but what we did there is we tried to simplify things, and we just are using the year. So this is release 22.0. Later on, uh, towards the very end of the summer, it looks like we'll be shipping release 22.1, which will have some new features in it. Uh, I can't tell you what those new features are exactly today. That's, of course, getting locked down. But in our community forums, we do give sneak peeks on things and we have surveys running and stuff like that where you could ask questions and we also get your input. So, but that's what's happening. So version 22.0, also known as Mylio Photos that we shipped was delivered yesterday and came out on the app stores for Android and iOS and also on Mac and Windows. So we hope you had a chance to pick it up. So we are going to be exploring Mylio Photos. We got a, a lot of great things we're going to be looking through today. My name is Rich Harrington. I am uh, head of uh, the product team, and I get a chance to, to work on some of the, the features as well as putting these pieces together. Uh, I'm also a photographer and a photo educator. Through the years, I've published about 40 books on photography and video and regularly release educational classes through LinkedIn Learning and Kelby Training uh, to help people do more with their photos and video. And uh, my co-host today for the webinar is Angela. I'll let Angela introduce herself. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Angela Andrew. And in addition to being a product evangelist for Mylio Photos, I'm a fine art photographer and photography coach. And I am really excited to share with you today some of my workflow and a lot of creative and fun things you can do in addition to keeping everything organized with Mylio Photos. It's very exciting. Excellent. Excellent. So we're going to kick things off right away and, and take a, a photo, a tour of the new Mylia photos. Uh, Angela, how do you feel about sharing your screen for that? Would you mind uh, giving us the guided tour? We could talk about some of the new things and point out some of the hidden gems. I can certainly do that. So I have Mylia loaded right now with our awesome sample library. So this is my demo account, not my personal account. We can, we can take a look at that later if you want, but I wanted to share some of the really cool images that we have that you can work with as you're getting to know Mylio. The sample library can be downloaded and installed and then easily removed so it's not going to mess with your image library. Um, very safe and easy to do. All you have to do is go to the dashboard, down to help and more, and there's going to be a button here at the top to either add or remove the sample library. Super, super simple. And when you click to remove it, it removes all traces of it. So any metadata, anything left behind from those images, it's completely gone and keeps your library clean for your images. So that's what I'm working with today, but we're gonna jump around and see some of just what Mylio Photos has to offer. So over here in the upper left, I'm starting in the all photos view, and this is gonna be every image in my library. And I can go ahead and scroll through this from, it's sorted by date, you can change the sort options here in the more menu and choose how you want this to be sorted. And it's just gonna give you an overview of every image in your library from every camera, every folder, every location that you've added into Mylio in one consolidated view. We can then jump over to the calendar view. And if you double click on that, it takes you up to the decade view, which is going to be year by year. And each line is gonna be a decade here and you can get an overview of your life in photos. And this has to be one of my favorite things in Mylio in that you can go back and back and back. You can start adding in scanned family photos. You can adjust the dates easily so they show up in the right place. And one of the coolest things is if you scroll all the way up, we have an undated category. So if you don't know the date for something, it doesn't necessarily need to be cluttering up some other portion of your calendar like the date you scanned it. It can be put into undated for you to find that date later and add it at your leisure. Yeah. And Angela, the sample library that you installed here, one of our colleagues is with us, JC. Uh, JC is head of our customer success department and uh, manages all the folks that tackle our support tickets, as well as other 
resources that help out customers. A lot of these are his personal photos and we'll have JC on in a little bit to talk through uh, some of these cool things. But loading the sample library is a great way to explore some of the features of Mylio that maybe you haven't gotten to yet. Uh, can you go down a little lower in your calendar, Angela? One of the things I think a lot of people miss is how easy it is to connect your personal calendars so they overlay. So once you're into this and you start seeing bars on there, you can manually add them, but you can also connect uh, sample calendars. So if you go under the settings menu, uh, you can actually go to the three dots and you'll see a preferences here for calendar. And this is where you can actually to control how many things are shown. And then if you go back one to linked calendar, this is where you can actually connect to your calendar and it will go to the calendar on your computer, connect them, allow you to see it. It's got to launch the calendar and things like this, but you could choose what's there. So this is great. If you have a family calendar and you want to see the vacations or things like that, you can go ahead and connect and do that. So hopefully it's going to, you might have to switch to your calendar, which is launching Angela. I didn't mean to. Well, this, I, I don't even, I, now that I did this, I don't think I have calendar set up on this user account. So, oh, so just, that's why it's thinking so hard. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no problem. Well, while that's happening, I'll share my screen because it's connecting. Right. But that's going to allow you to link to your devices. I forgot she was using a, uh, a demo computer. I'm going to show you a copy of Mylio 100% loaded. So uh, you're going to see it really um, loaded down. But here's my iPad being shared. And you can see my personal copy of Mylio. So right now, all of my devices are there. I've got a new Galaxy phone that I just connected. Uh, I've got com two computers that are in the office there that are both downloading it. I've got my home computers and some other devices. My iPhone's pulling down some new pictures and I've connected multiple backup vaults. And I see that they're all right now doing some syncing. So we'll talk about that process later when we add devices, but everything becomes nice and clean. So when we go to the calendar tab, as Angela was mentioning, you could see that I've got overlays there for some of the trips and things that we've done. So if I go into say last summer and in July, I could see all the things we did when I was in Lexington, or if I wanna look at a particular day, I can uh, view another month and, and see you know, trips that we've taken. Oh, this was our family's trip that we're getting ready to go on. And when I tap on Massanutten and click on that, which was our trip, I'm gonna see all the pictures from that trip in one view, not just the date. So connecting your calendars works really well. Uh, you know, as I said, I'm actually sharing my personal one. So uh, I keep an exercise log. So that's why you're gonna see lots of sweaty photos of me. It's not some weird thing. It's just, that's in my thing. And later on, we could talk about filters, but that's that view. Um, and then of course we have our map view and this is gonna allow you to zoom and see your pictures. We're gonna teach you later on how to manually add pictures to the map, what's cool. But I wanted to show something that was brand new uh, that you might not have seen before. And that's the ability to control this page. So Angela, what do you use folder view for? Really just to see what's on my hard drive and where. Um, I have come from a Lightroom background. So a lot of times if I'm looking for something specifically, I might wanna go straight to the folder where I know something resides. And mm -hmm. that's when I'm gonna go to folder view. Um, otherwise there's a lot of other great tools to search in Mylio and find what you need. So it's just a matter of how you have your images organized at this time, whether folder view will be someplace you spend a lot of time or very little time. So what's really cool is under your dashboard now, when you choose a device, you can actually choose how things are associated with that device. So we made working with linked folders even easier now. So linked folders are folders that exist on another device. And when you go to import things now, you have the ability to link to them where they're already stored. So you could see here that I could actually move where things are associated with. So this gives me the ability to name things as well as market whether or not it belongs to a particular device. So you can very much control where things appear in that folder list now using your device control settings. And then here's something I really love that most people miss. So you've probably seen and know that you guys can go under the import menu and connect to online services like Facebook or Flickr and bring those down, which is quite cool. But here's something I like. So normally Facebook is gonna keep all the subfolders and galleries and everything you did to upload and organize those pictures. 
So if you've ever made a photo album, like my daughter went to horse camp, or here's a trip that I took with my dad for his uh, 75th birthday when we had a chance to go to Hawaii, right? So we could see all of those things connect. But once you're in a folder, this more menu in the upper right corner has some magical things. And I love this option, show media in. What it does is it collapses all of the folders into a single view. And so now you can see everything and this will allow you to sort chronologically, for example, or alphabetically. And so you could actually collapse several pictures and see them presented in the order that they happened. So it doesn't matter if you posted them to an album or to your timeline, uh, it just gives you that flat view. And that's the same thing. And we're gonna be talking about uh, camera roll integration later, now when you view. So under the hood, if we go in and we take a look at the view menu here, I could view this as a container and you're gonna see that my iPad, my iPhone, my Mac mini, my Mac studio and my MacBook Pro are all connected now to iCloud Photo Library. But under the hood, it just shows it as a unified library. So what's really cool from folder view is let's say you wanted to view this, you get the ability to switch between seeing all pictures or seeing folders. So if we go to our trips folder and maybe I don't wanna view these as separate ones or let's say, and uh, JC, I believe this was your trip to the Galapagos, right? These are some great memories of yours. Yeah, that was me last year. Yeah, so maybe you don't wanna to have to just see the land pictures and the underwater pictures. Going to that menu and saying, show me the media, flattens it into a single gallery. So it's a great way to immerse yourself. And remember, you've got a little slider here to control zoom, but if you're on a touch device, you could just pinch and zoom right there to adjust the size of the grid to what you need it to. It's all touch responsive. So some pretty cool things there. All right, Angela, what else do we want to cover on this before we go to our next section of things we're going to let people know about? Um, did we talk much about people view here? No, go for it. All right. So um, you want to go ahead and tap on the people view and show some of the people in your library. You can see Rich has tagged pretty much everyone who's important to him in his life. In and, and, and a few random ones just for fun, like Abraham Lincoln and Stormtrooper, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> I can tell he still has quite a few to go, though. So if you look in the upper left corner, 31,000 out of 450,000 photos is not quite a bit to go. <laughs> I don't know. I'm down to two. It's all bottom, relative so. is what I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this lets you take a look at the images that still need to be tagged. And if you click on the batch tagging icon there in the right hand column, it's going to pick faces that it already recognizes. And so you can easily and quickly go through and tag more of these people. So up at the top there, you can see there's an approve, reject, reject, and ignore. If all of these images are Rich's son, he can go ahead and just check approve and bam, those are now all tagged. Yeah. And same with this. If this is Carol, he can this make sure that's mom. Carol. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> and keep going through. And it, it shows you how quick and easy it is just to work through all of these images and get these face tags added. Yep. Um, to me, it kind of became a game. And that's how I got my library down to where I only have 250 untagged faces. <laughs> and, and here's the thing that I like to point out, okay? And, and this is embarrassing hair moment. So, you know, I don't get to have embarrassing hair moments very much anymore at this point in my life. But um, I got to say our face detection is pretty good because that really is me in kindergarten. Oh, my goodness. And it was able to recognize me. So even though your bodies change and things evolve, Remember, our face detection is running privately on your device. So I feel totally comfortable tagging my kids and other people in my family. And I don't worry about it because everything happens right on your devices. None of this data goes to the cloud or is analyzed in other servers. But uh, yeah, there's embarrassing moment. But it did correctly <laughs> extrapolate that based on my nose and eyes and relative position of some key facial features, that really was me. And uh, it does work, guys. So and I've seen this with other scans and that's a scanned photo, not a digital photo. So this technology is not dependent on only your digital images. You can absolutely work with scanned photos. I used to be cute is all I'll say. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, 
Well, we're going to explore cool. things here. We got a lot of great things to, to cover today. Uh, now we're going to be talking about accessing images remotely. And we added some really cool features for fetching. So one of the things that's important to note is that when you set up your devices, which we're gonna be talking about a lot with JC here in a moment, uh, you have control. So a lot of people miss this. You get to decide what happens on each device. So this is my iPad Pro. It has a two terabyte hard drive library. My photo library is about 450,000 images. It's 11 terabytes in size. That's a lot of pictures. Uh, some of you probably have more, some of you have less. Um, I know people have bigger libraries. I know people have smaller libraries, but there's no way to fit 11 terabytes of photos on an iPad, but I don't have to make compromises. So what you do is you just choose your device and over here, you see device quality. This lets you control what happens. Now, here's what I'm going to say. We are, uh, normally this looks like this and you're like, I didn't see those controls before. Um, we're tweaking these controls soon to make these a little bit more fun and clear, but I want to unlock this really quick and we're going to revisit it later too. If you tap advanced settings, you now see what's happening. And by default, Milio is in this auto optimized state, which means it'll fit previews and things on your drive. And, and you've got the ability to say, how much free space do I want? If you tap show customizations, you can decide what happens. So on my tablet, I've decided to sync every single preview. Smart previews are great. They're fully editable. They're about three to 5% the size of the original. There's raw data in there and they're high enough quality to make a five by seven print, share to social media, anything else you need. But you can decide what gets stored on your device. I'd also encourage you while you're here to turn on tap to sync. That's a magic button because here's what it does. Now, when you're on your device and you realize you need something, it's really easy. So I might decide that, oh, I was getting ready to, to do some teaching here and uh, I wanted to process these photos. If I tap on that P, I could temporarily to my iPad, download the original files. And you're going to notice here our redesigned status icons. I could see that download happening right there. There it is. It's pulling it down and it's syncing. So we could see the transfer happening. It's telling us what's going on. I also see right here, quickly on the device tab, what's going on there. So we can see all those transfers going. So when you tap that sync button, tap the sync, Milio will connect to one of your other devices, as long as it's powered on and has an internet connection, and pull down the files to your device. So when I'm working remotely and all I have is my iPad, I could do that, which is pretty cool. But here's something else that's nice. Let's say you wanted to do something like share a picture and you wanted to make sure you were sharing the full quality picture, not a partial quality picture, right? So I have really good control. So when I'm in on a picture folder, Let's say I wanted to send my wife uh, a picture from last summer because we're getting excited to take our family vacation. And I wanted to send her a photo to remind her of these fun places we get to visit and say, you know, I want to go back there. And look at that speed, guys, how fast we can scan through a library. It's incredible. What I can do is say, oh, okay, well, let's make this easier. Filter. Show me the best pictures. Just show me my four-star and five-star photos. Well, that made it a lot easier to find the right picture. Oh, and I want to send her this one, us out in the field, right? Well, those smart previews are fully editable. By the way, we added a one-click auto button, make it a little bit simpler. And you have the ability here to do highlight recovery, adjust the exposure, lift the shadows, right? You can dial that in. When you're ready, you just tap the share button. And now we can actually go and fetch the original automatically. So Milio Photos can connect to your other devices and will pull down the full quality file 
to your device when you tap that button. So it works really well to go and grab things. Now I'm doing a giant sync here, so it's gonna take a little bit to connect, but you get that flexibility. But what's really cool is you also could just use the quality you have. And remember, Mylio doesn't need an internet connection to work. So if you're not connected to the internet, everything is still on your device with all those smart previews. You can go through, open, edit, work. Everything is right there, still on your device. So you can do any of those editing that you need to and dial it in as you want to get the type of picture you were hoping for. So that's the new Fetch Originals capability. And it's gonna kick in whenever you are getting ready to do some work. So if you're deciding that you wanna share a picture, hand it off, do some other type of editing, it will automatically pull down the full quality from your network. All right, Angela, how are we doing on questions or comments? Anything related to what we're talking about right now or that we can squeeze in really quick? Um, you know, they're a little bit all over the place and a lot of different topics. Um, let's see here. The one that I'm answering at the moment is how to sort in people, people view. And it's up under the more menu. You can sort by first name, last name, or ascending and descending. Yep. Um, I think they were hoping for some other options or maybe able, maybe the option to manually sort. Um, at this time, it's not possible, but that's a great oh, feature. That's what an album is for. Just toss them into an go. album and you can manually sort. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, by the way here, guys, if you want to reuse and edit, all you, you could actually copy, switch to another picture, and just paste your edit from one picture to another to reuse it. So if you've edited a picture and get it the way you want, you can copy and paste settings between it. And I'm going to switch to the desktop view for just a moment because this is a really hidden feature, and, uh, but it's a cool one. And I'm really happy with this one because it makes it easier. So first off, if you are on your mobile device, remember the share menu lets you work with what you have. It can go and fetch the high quality if you want, or you could use the smart preview that you have. When you tap that, you can access any app on your iPad or just copy it to the clipboard. And then when you switch to another tool, like say you go into uh, an email tool or a presentation, you could just do paste and there it is, right? So we have this ability to copy and paste on our phones and our tablets. Well, you now have that ability inside of Mylio proper too. So we still have a share menu, but we've added this ability here to do this at a higher level. So if I saw that I had some pictures that I wanted to share, right? So uh, two days ago was Prince's birthday. And, and I had a chance a few years back to take pictures of him in concert. And I wanna be able to share these with a friend who also happens to be a fan and posted about it. I literally just say, edit, copy, and I could switch to anything I want. Like, let's say Slack. I could then go in, select my friend. Let me just move Slack over here really quick so you can see it. And you can go to anybody that you need to send a message to. Let me just make a new message here. Hold on. There, new message. And I could just paste. And all those pictures will go right from your clipboard into the other application. You can go to a slideshow, a presentation, you name it. You now have copy and paste from Mylio. So you don't have to always export and re-upload files. So it's really simple. You can copy and paste right from Mylio into any other app on your desktop computer. And that's for Mac and Windows. So it makes it really simple uh, to, to do that. And it's very, very easy to go between applications. So I think I, that makes it pretty cool, right? Remember guys, if you want to remotely sync, go to your device and under device quality, make sure that you take advantage of things like on that device, tap to sync. And 
that will give you the ability right in the corner of the picture to be able to sync on demand. So let me share the tablet again. So now inside of Mylio Photos on the tablet, all I have to do is go to my devices section, dashboard, devices, choose my iPad Pro, and under device quality, I'll just make sure that tap to sync is turned on. So now, whenever you need it, all you have to do is go to the folder of images that you want, open it up, and you can download a folder at a time. If you don't want to do an entire folder, you don't have to. You could simply go in, find the picture that you want, if you're on an iPad or a touch trace, press and hold, and then you could tap to select multiple pictures. And from the corner menu there, you could choose download originals. Now, I'm not on the internet. Let's connect to the internet. <laughs> there we go. And when I choose that, download originals, it will pull them down to my device once it finishes connecting back to the net. So that gives you the ability to grab things on demand when you need them, picture by picture, folder by folder, by just tapping. And that's that great ability to get what you need when you need it. And going forward now, when you share a picture, when you export a picture, when you send a picture to another application, you are gonna always get that opportunity when you use the share button, it will go and download the original when you need it. So as long as you have a device that's turned on or a vault that's accessible, you will end up with the original picture on your device temporarily. There it is. You see, I now have the full quality Nikon D7000 file right there on my device. And I am natively working with the full raw file and all of its pixels right there on my device. And so I have complete control. By the way, you might have noticed we've tweaked the editing panel a little bit, got the sliders in the industry standard order. And then when I'm all set, share, and it will have the full quality file if needed and give me that ability to send it with the full quality file. All right. We are about to talk with uh, another guest here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, would you mind checking to see if uh, we have Dion standing by? Dion is trying to get in. He is, um, he didn't get in a panelist email. So we're, we're looking into that real quick. All right, no problem. I'll keep going while we get our guest on. So right. uh, hopefully you guys see there, by the way, notice how I edited that picture. And I like that develop settings a lot better. Remember, copy. Now you could just press and hold and I can select any of the pictures that I want. And very easily paste those edit settings and all the pictures take on the new edits. It's that simple. So it makes it really easy to get those quickly synced. But while we're getting our guest logged in and ready here, and he can also just log in as a regular attendee and you could promote them if you guys need to. Uh, let me tackle a few of the questions. How do I find where the vault is? So a vault is a device that you specifically choose to make a vault. We suggest you add a large external hard drive to one of your computers, but a vault is simply a device that is set to have all originals. So I've chosen my Amazon drive that I get with being an Amazon Prime member that gives me free unlimited JPEG and RAW photos as a vault. And I've also added a couple of external hard drives here, which make it simple. And so any device that has the vault label is a vault device. And you'll see that under device quality where it is set as a vault. If you decide to change that and customize it, then you have other choices available, but that's what a vault is. So a vault device is just a device like a hard drive or a computer with plenty of space that you've set to have all your pictures. 